Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. Consider a large circle from which four smaller circles have been removed. Each of the smaller circles passes through the center of the large circle and touches the boundary of the large circle. The smaller circles are in the north, east, south, and west positions. If these four smaller circles are removed from the large circle, what is the area that remains? In other words, what is the area of the shaded region in the following diagram, which is the area of the region between the large circle and the boundary of these four smaller circles? The large circle's diameter equals 84. This problem was asked to primary school students in Singapore. Can you figure it out? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. So this problem can be solved in many different methods, and in this video, I'm going to present three of them. In the first method, we're going to construct a large square by connecting the points where exactly two of the circles intersect. What's useful about this square is that it's going to cover up the regions in which these circles overlap. So we can now calculate the area that we need to remove by considering the areas of five different shapes which do not overlap. In particular, the shaded area is equal to the area of the large circle minus the area of the square minus the area of four semicircles. The large circle has a diameter of 84 and each of the small circles has a diameter that's half as long, so it's 42. The square has a side that's equal to the diameter of a semicircle, so its side is equal to 42. A circle has an area of pi r squared, and a square has an area of s squared. The four semicircles are equal to two circles. So we can now substitute in the dimensions of each of these shapes, and we end up with an expression for the area of the shaded region. The answer will be 882 pi minus 1764, which is approximately 1006.885. So this method is nice because we don't have to evaluate the region in which two of the smaller circles overlap. In the next method, we'll go ahead and do that explicitly. What we'll do is we'll consider this square. We'll connect the center of one of the smaller circles to the points in which the two circles intersect, two adjacent circles intersect. So now the area where these two circles intersect can be found as follows. This will actually be equal to the area of two of these quarter circles from each of these smaller squares minus the area of this square. So to show you where these two quarter circles come from, I'm going to separate them. So now you can see where that overlapping region comes from. Now each quarter circle has an area of pi r squared over four, and the square has an area of s squared. This square has a side length of 21 because it's equal to the radius of one of the smaller circles. We can now substitute in these dimensions and then simplify our expression. So we get the area of overlap between two adjacent circles is equal to 220.5 pi minus 441. So how is this going to help us solve the problem that we need? Well, we want to know the area of the region we've removed. So this will be equal to the area of the four smaller circles and then we have four of these overlapping regions. So we don't want to overcount the area that we're removing, so we're going to have to add back these overlapping regions. In other words, we have the area of the shaded region is equal to the area of the large circle minus the area of four of the smaller circles, and then we add back in four of these overlapping regions to make sure we're not double counting the area that we're removing. 
So we substitute in the formulas for these areas and the dimensions. And then what we end up, it's actually kind of interesting. You can see the large circle actually has an area that's equal to four of the smaller circles. So the area of the shaded region is actually equal to the area of these four overlapping regions between two of the smaller circles. This is 882 pi minus 1764, or approximately 1006.885. So while this method was a little more complicated, we actually learned a couple of things we didn't learn from the first method. So I'm now going to present one more way to calculate the area between two of the overlapping circles. I'll draw in an isosceles right triangle in one of the smaller circles. This divides the overlapping region between an upper and a lower region. I'm going to move the lower region from inside the triangle to outside the triangle. And now what we have is that the area of the overlapping region between two circles is equal to the area of the semicircle minus the area of the isosceles right triangle. The area of the semicircle is pi r squared over 2, and the area of the triangle is equal to its base times its height divided by 2. The triangle has a height that's equal to the radius of the semicircle, which is 21, and its base is equal to the diameter of the smaller circle, which is 42. So we can now substitute in these dimensions and then simplify to get that the area of the overlap between two of the smaller circles is again 220.5 pi minus 441. We then proceed just as we did in the second part of method two, where we calculate the shaded region by subtracting out from the large circle four of the smaller circles and then adding back in four of these overlapping regions. We've already calculated each of these, so now we can get to the, exactly the same answer of 882 pi minus 1764, which is approximately 1006.885. Did you figure it out? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Presh Hallwalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.